practicing of that first page of the Chopin Waltz, Opus 42. There are all kinds of ideas that will help after you've done that uneven practice that I showed you last night, all the different ways. Short, uh, so long, short, long, short, long, and then short, long, short, long, short, long, and triplets, sitting on the first, sitting on the second, sitting on the third, and then too long, too short, too short, too long, and long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Once you've done all of that kind of thing, there's the metronome. Now that's one way. Now then there's also, and and with the metronome you can take it one tick per note. In the end, you don't want to hear those one, two fingers. Like, you don't want to hear. You want just. Because it's bar to bar to bar. You want to have that sense of uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, two, one, two. goes off to the races. But the, the use of, of the digital metronome, this is, this is a really useful tool. What you do is you photocopy a page, that first page of the piece, and you've got a clean copy then because you don't want to be writing all over this original one. But you, what you want to do and a good, it's a good trick, is to close everything and start to play it for memory. And when you come to a note that you're not too sure of, pull out this piece of paper, take your trusty uh, 2B pencil, and write the name of that note that you weren't sure of. Circle it and write it. And every time you come to that spot, it has to be something that you remember. You reinforce what you didn't know. You don't just sort of worry about something not certain at that spot. You have practiced that over and over and get that really into your head, what was uncertain. And you'll find that there's not that many spots that you really don't know after you've done all those uneven ways of practice. Just a single note, maybe, or a single chord or a little change between one spot where it comes in and the next spot where that particular uh, harmony happens, that sort of thing, that you can, uh, that you can st have something to study in your score. Take the score away from the piano and study those particular spots, hearing it in your head, the musical line, where they come at a particular point in time in your, in your study of the piece. So that's a really useful thing to do. And when you record yourself doing it for memory, with the digital recorder, and then you, you turn around and play it back, it'll show you all kinds of things that you're surprised that that's what's happening, <laughs> that you missed that, that you didn't really hear that that's what, what was happening. But you'll hear in the sequence of notes where the particular memory spot is, and it'll be reinforced that what you studied away from the piano is what you have to use, shape your hand for, for that next note. Now, another thing that's very useful is in your slow practice, heaviness. If you can imagine, like Christian Zimmerman said, get on the floor and, and the keyboard is up there. And when you're hanging like that, like hanging on the edge of a cliff with your fingertips, it's a heaviness that, that you're in the keys. The wrist is movable, but it's a heaviness that's 
one note to the next. That will serve you really well, that linking of that heaviness from one note to the next because you have something to crawl in that is substantial. It's not superficial and light and, and flighty. It's solid practice. And then lift the unused fingers and this kind of thing. So I just want to emphasize those points that that's a good way to practice. Now, when you take the metronome, set the metronome at, say, 72, and that would be for a quarter, for, for two eighths, let's say. So. Because you want slow practice, but you're below, so it's heavy, so you're crawling. Now, as I say, you don't bring out the one and the two heavily when you play it, but in your slow practice, in your high lift practice, you want to have those as a strong, holding of the weight over to the next note, over to the next. It's your body. It's, it's body weight. And so when you can hear that evenness, that steadiness of the piece, so if I play it like this, I'll even go slower. So... It's, it can't be blurry. You can't leave the thumb down once you play the second finger. It's got to be a high, clean release. So, and as I say, if you think of a cloud here, compress the cloud with your finger lift. Compress it. Squeeze it. Get it. Get the lift that high while the wrist is movable and while you're hanging from underneath the keyboard. Then you'll feel you're building something into your hands, and it's very healthy feeling. So, now try to do it where you can hardly even hear those notes of the one and the two. So. This part comes in, Chopin puts the pedal straight through for the whole bar, and uh, you just lift it off on the sixth eighth of the bar, uh, a, six, a six eighth note of the bar. In other words, the last eighth note of the bar for each bar, whereas up above it's down for two eighths off on the third. So, like down, 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 up. down here, when you come into this part here, and you're up here, you can afford its higher notes, so you can afford it won't be as blurry, and you can afford to leave the pedal down for the whole bar, and just up at the very end, completely off. And again, don't hear these. So. that slowly, even slower than that, it'll let you hear that you're keeping the, the bar to the bar, like... Then you can even spread at the end, like if you go... Spread. See how I... Yeah, not... 
Give yourself time to take a breath and then move on. When you start to put all these things into it, eventually you really have a beautiful piece of music flowing along because you are creating control of how lightly you're depressing those inner notes, the, the so lightly that you're barely even playing them and yet you're flopping through. So it allows you to balance and roll and crawl and take these even though they're light. So you're to think of the slowness of this falling into the keys to bring the hammer up with assertion but gently and you f you are underneath the keyboard as you do this and then you can crawl from one note to the next fingers lead body follows you can shape ahead you can hold it together with your hands those that melody while you're doing underneath that gives you a few ideas on how to refine your practicing once you've done all that heavy practice uneven both hands separately and hands together because the left hand can be done all the different ways as well as the right hand from eighth to eighth and then balance where you think of the bar 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 it's like when you do this to play those lightly got control of every note underneath it's the same thing here you've got to have they've got to be that light underneath but so and yet the melody can be bold that's the Schubert impromptu opus 90 number three the number two is beautiful too and the gain when just refining the playing to the way you would want it when you play it up to speed but doing it slowly for the dynamics and the balance of the voices makes a huge difference and it makes it much more fun to practice it's one thing to do all that slow heavy and you want to do that every day but then you must get into the expressive end of it and the metronome is the secret because if I can think of one tick per quarter that's but then lighten that underneath and hang on it really be underneath it with all your body on the floor and then change it to double this and put a tick for every eight so if that's at 66 then we go up to here like 126 or something then
try and get a quality of sound because you're not just hitting the key, you're coming in gently on each one, heavier or lighter, depending on whether you're on the soprano voice or the alto. It makes all the difference. You have so much more fun practicing when you're actually using your imagination to shape the phrases and to get the balance of the voices and to know that the tone is always good, that there's nothing scrunched between the notes and there's nothing harsh in the f forcing of the key down because that's what ruins your tone. You want it to be expressive even when you're going dead slowly. So be able to go one, two, and think of a pendulum swinging inside your stomach. One, two, three, four, five, six. doing that even if you just do two bars or four bars for memory immediately you'll want to pull this out if there's a note that you weren't certain of circle it on there and then when you study that page away from the piano you'll be reinforcing what you didn't know not just keep playing the same things wrong over and over and you'll find your practicing becomes much more accelerated in in progress because of doing all of these things so I hope that gives you a few ideas to think about and uh, that you'll want to start this piece because it's so much fun to play. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.